All right, so here we're going to look at uh, dual power supply. So again, this, this power supply has actually three power supplies built into this supply. We have output A, a five volt output in the middle, and an output B. Remember, when you're using these power supplies, number one, always use the meter to set the voltage. So you can see my digital multimeter is set to 10.00 volts and yet the display is showing 9.7 on it. So you always want to make sure that you set your voltage with the meter. Okay, so I've attached my meter leads. Right now I'm just using the meter leads to set the voltage. You always want to set the voltage before you uh, do your uh, circuit. So remember there's a current knob on both uh, output A and output B have a current limiting knob. You want to turn that all the way counterclockwise. All right, that has current protection, uh, overload protection in it. That'll prevent you from blowing a fuse or blowing a resistor or something when the, if the circuit shorts out. So always make sure that you turn this knob all the way down. Okay, so uh, you can see here. If I just kind of take a, a jumper and I short these, of course, you never really want to do this at home, right? Don't try this at home. But if I short these, you're going to see, <clears throat> actually, let me set the voltage. Okay, so um, I'm going to set the voltage here. Okay, so we've got our voltage set here to be 5 volts on the power supply on the right side output B and just to kind of show you you see this light here says uh, CV for constant voltage and so it's holding that 5 volts at a constant voltage now I've got my current knob my current protection knob here turned all the way down so this is a safety thing so if I shorted this out so again you don't want to try this at home but if I short these out let's just say even just with this connection here, I short these out. Notice that it's dropping down here. The CC light is coming on saying constant current. All right, and if we look, it's actually drawn uh, according to the meter. And again, this meter may not be real accurate, but it's, it's saying that it's, it's drawn up to 200 milliamps through there, okay? So I'm not sure how accurate that current um, meter setting is there but you know when you short this out it's uh, the voltage drops and then you get a, a current there alright so um, the currents kind of fluctuating because the the circuitry in there is is saying hey this is awful high and, and it's uh, limiting that but uh, Notice the voltage has dropped to zero. Remember, you got to flip this switch to see the voltage or the current. So this is the voltage. The voltage it's shorted out, so it's basically zero. If I remove the short, then though the the voltage actually goes back up to the constant voltage. So you always want to make sure that your voltage light stays on. Your constant voltage CV light stays on. All right, so here I've got a 100 ohm resistor and we've got our meter set to 10 volts. Now remember, I set this with the meter a little bit ago, so I know it's actually 10 volts even though it's reading 9.7. The display's off a little bit, so but I've got 10 volts here. It's outputting that constant, the CV light is on, so it's outputting this constant uh, 10 volts here. And now I'm gonna connect it to a 100 ohm resistor. Now remember, 10 volts divided by 100 ohms means that this is going to want this is going to want 100 milliamps of current. All right. So the current knob is turned all the way down, which is only allows normally about maybe 30 milliamps. And so when I connect this up, you're going to see that the voltage has dropped. It hasn't dropped all the way to zero because it's not a dead short. But it's, it's dropped down to be uh, about 1.4 volts or maybe 2 volts there. Remember, this display is not accurate, so we could hook this up and hook our voltmeter back up. 
to read an accurate voltage. All right, so I guess it's actually the meter's kind of fairly accurate at that point, so it's reading about 1.5 volts. But the reason it's doing that is because it we have a 100 ohm resistor here. It wants more current, according to Ohm's law, for 10 volts, we would need 1 uh, 100 milliamps flowing through it. And our our current knob is currently only allowing, as I said, maybe 30 milliamps to flow through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this current knob and I'm just going to turn it up just a little bit. Okay. So watch the the CC light says that the current protection is working now. It's it's outputting a constant current. And it's um but the voltage has dropped because it of the current limit setting of the current knob. So I'm going to just bump this current knob up a little bit and you can see that the voltage starts moving as I allow a little bit more current. And then there's a little bit more current and a little bit more current. So I'm going to crank this back up until my constant voltage light takes over again. And now I'm, I'm here at my 10 volts, 9.99 volts. Okay, so I've got uh, effectively 10 volts across here which means that I have uh, 100 milliamps flowing through through here but I still have current protection because uh, I've got it set to be maybe just a little bit more than 100 milliamps uh, that it's going to allow through there so that again that's why we need to set our current knob keep it turned all the way down and then if you do get the constant current light on and you know that your circuit is wired correctly then you can just bump this up just barely enough till it goes back to a constant voltage and your voltage is returned back to what voltage that you desire all right so watch that constant current light but always make sure before you start cranking that current knob, number one, that your circuit is correct and nothing's shorted out. And number two, just turn it just enough to allow that voltage to return back to your set voltage value and the constant voltage light to turn on.